Welcome to Crime Planner, and today on PWCI this week, we're doing a little something different. You've probably seen the show WWE Ride Along. Well, we're doing a WWE Ride Along of sorts, and I have a special guest with me in in the car. The genius Lenny Poffo. How are you doing today? Fantastic. I read the obituaries and my name is I did it, so I'm gonna have a great day. You came to Springfield uh, this weekend. Um, you toured the uh, Lincoln Presidential Museum. How was it? Oh, wow. It was exciting and fantastic and great. You know, I have a very dear friend, Tom Schwartz, that I graduated high school with. Uh, many years ago, he took me for a tour of Springfield, and I got to see things that the usual tourist doesn't get to see because we graduated in the same year at the same school, Downers Grove North, Downers Grove, Illinois. But now he has moved on to greener pastures. He is now the number one man at the Herbert Hoover Museum, and uh, that left me with uh, going to the museum and uh, you know, Jason took me and we had a great time. It was excellent. And I was really amazed at how interactive it was and exciting. You have a lot of history in Springfield, Illinois. Um, back in the day, um, your fathers ran a, uh, a wrestling promotion, International Championship Wrestling. And you had made Springfield, Illinois, the Prairie Capital Convention Center a regular stop. Um, this is pre-WWE days. Uh, what do you remember about the um, the shows at the Prairie Capital? Well, I remember it was 400 miles from Lexington, so that's 800 miles round trip. So um, don't ever tell anybody that it was easy. You know, it's like miles to go before I sleep, yeah. miles to go before I sleep, <laughs> so uh, my life is much better now, now that I don't have to put in long, long trips, you know, I just do a weekend warrior gig, you know, but um, it was, uh, I've always been a fan of Abraham Lincoln, and I've been a fan of Springfield, Illinois, for the same reason. You won, um, you may have invented one of those cards. Um, you wrestled against the champion at the time. I believe it was Paul Christie. Um, and you won. <laughs> you won the title back from him. Uh, Christie, I guess, somehow got it. I guess beat your brother, Randy, Randy for the belt way back when. Do um, you remember anything from that night? Oh, I remember every detail, and but mostly I still keep in touch with Paul Christie and his lovely wife, Bunny. Remember Bunny? I'm afraid I don't know. Yeah. That's a little bit before my time, watching as a fan. Yeah, um, I, he lives in uh, Michigan, and uh, he's getting older. We are all getting older. I just don't feel it yet. Um, I'm going to be 64 in December, and uh, he's, I think he's 80, or coming up on 80. And after 80, it's just patch, patch, patch all the way downhill. Except for me, I'm going to, I'm going to defy the odds. Yeah, I do remember Christy, I, to an extent. Yeah, um, he did make it to WWE, though. He was, um, I guess, one of the biggest heel, one of the biggest heels in Illinois wrestling history. Uh, yeah, Randy got Christy into WWE as a personal favor. I would say, um, I think West Virginia. Um, Beckley, West Virginia was a good town for us um, and I uh, I liked what do you call it um, the town
called Superman is from? Metropolis. Metropolis. Yeah. Now they've got big Superman stuff. So I was there last year doing all that Superman uh, tourism. Did you like make it the uh, Superman festival or? No, but I was. I mean, I don't go when there's a festival. I go when I go. Ah. When I go wrestle. But uh, I was there as a personal meet and greet appearance. And. I went there and uh, I said, wow, it's all built up Superman style. See, I was there, I went through it and I said, well, what happened here? He said, you don't know, there was a tornado last night and everything was ruined. I uh, went through Metropolis. Or was it Marion, Illinois? I can't remember. Marion. They've also been hit. Marion, Illinois. Yeah, anyway. Oh, I, I know it. I remember this because it was like, it was graduation weekend that weekend when that tornado went through and it that storm got powerful enough there's like it developed an eye in the storm so it was like an inland hurricane for a brief time tell me some of the wrestlers that worked for ICW I did read a list but uh, I may not I'm not quite familiar with all the names well, the biggest names Ernie Ladd, Knox Baker, Bob Orton Jr., Ronnie Garvin, Bob Root, um, Macho Man Randy Savage is the biggest name by far. Yes. Um, George Weingroff was my tag team partner. We're still friends. He's doing well, very well for himself in Nashville. Got a vending business. Very smart guy. I like a story where wrestlers are doing well. I hate it when they start off those GoFundMe pages. Yeah, that's. I just said Br Brutus Beefcake just got a GoFundMe. I said, well, you know, what can you do, right? These guys were not uh, careful planners. Second. Uh, I'll oh. tell you, Rick McCord, mm -hmm. uh, his name is Patrick Hovey, he's got a, he's in Roan Roanoke, Virginia, he's got a very successful limousine business, and good for him, he's a nice man. So, George Weingroff is doing well, Bill Martin, the Rookie of the Year from 1981, I just ran into him last week, and he's doing very, very well for himself. You know, you get it, all it takes is a little six-letter word called thrift and if you got that you got it made so you when did you start um, with the WWE officially in June of 1985 and you wrestled who was your first opponent I was teamed up with Pedro Morales against Mary O that was Bob Orton Jr.'s brother and somebody else I cannot remember. And then your, um, do you happen to remember your first singles match? It was uh, Madison Square Garden, evening Lanny Poffo versus Terry Gibbs. And I just saw Terry Gibbs last week, and he's doing very well working for, um, used to be US Air, then they got bought out by American Airlines. Or American, or U.S. Air bought out American. I don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah, I don't know who bought who. An airline merged. <laughs> Consolidation. But he's doing very well, and I'm very glad for him. I like it when wrestlers do well. There's so so few of us. I'm doing well. Central Illinois and St. Louis, you pretty much 
experience everything. And people ask me that question, I never know what to say. Uh, I'm just glad I got to the WWE and I'm glad uh, I finally in 1989 made it to the main events. I spent four months on the main events. I had two two shows where I was in the main event at Madison Square Garden. So Shakespeare says all's well that ends well. And uh, the secret to happiness is to do your best and forget the rest and don't compare yourself to the macho man because you'll always come up short. So I just never compared myself to him. Instead, I relished my own individuality. So that's the secret of uh, working with what you got. Also, did um, I did see a video where you talked about he um, insulted um, King Curtis or the. Yeah. So he flew back to Hawaii after Strongbow called him a charity case, yeah. or said it. Plains McMahon called him a charity case. Like, yeah. What was Strongbow's deal? Is he, he did he just have a certain mindset on what wrestling had to be, and he just kind of expected to be everybody in a certain mold, and that's why he was like so difficult to work with, with with so many people? Uh, I think he was motivated by what little power he had. He was like a... When they make you an agent, you have a certain amount of power. The power to fire people. Uh, to me, they were like hallway monitors. You know, they were... Uh, The road is hard anyway. Yeah. But when you're dealing with Jay Strongbow, it makes it worse. Because he's just uh, a miserable guy in a position of power. And um, he's dead now. And uh, forgive me if I fail to shed a tear. I forgive you. made him this way, though, do you think? I mean, well, or you say... Whenever there's a mass murder, they always say, what made him that way? Is it society's fault? Well, no, I don't think so. I think they're, uh, That's the way he's going to go down in history. I not guess not everybody hated him, but most people did. Just trying to save my job. Yes. <laughs> I was married at the time, and I had a daughter. I still have a daughter, and now I have a grandson. But um, I didn't think I could make more money doing something else besides WWE. And you uh, started cutting poems against the um, at the Boston Garden. Yes. Against the all the Boston sports teams. Yeah, and then then uh, the next the next day I went to Omaha, Nebraska, and I did a a nasty poem about the Cornhuskers. And you know, I don't even follow college football, but this is before we had Google. Yeah. So I had to do some research. And every town I went, I said, what does this town love? And I 
wrote a poem about what they love in a negative way. So it was a formula, getting people to hate me. Biggest surprise I heard from your, from uh, the answer or talking about the transition was three people tried to jump in the ring or yeah. jump the rail and well, jumped into the ring to attack you. Yeah, and Boston, the, Boston's not a real polite town. Boston's got some, uh, there's a place called Hyde Park, mm -hmm. there's a place called Dorchester. These are the tough areas. And uh, some of them get into the ring. So uh, those are, everybody knows Boston's a tough place. And they drink. Yeah. I guess the biggest difference from now, from back then, to now with the, the mindset of the wrestling fan we know what professional wrestling is now or most of us do the longtime fans anyway not so much the casual fans who watch every once in a while but back then in the 80s um, there was still predominantly a mindset although it was starting to turn because I course heard it from people constantly which irritated me because as a teenager at the time and I wanted to believe it was real um, people believe back then it was a competition still be believed it was a competition sport back then and instead of this sports entertainment mindset that is now um, uh, was it good for wrestling that um, I mean, internet I ain't changed about everyone's mindset on professional wrestling was that a good thing or a bad thing for me the internet is a good thing and the reason is uh, my orientation skills are not good and with GPS, I can drive anywhere without fear that I'm going to take a wrong turn. Mm -hmm. Even if I do take a wrong turn because I'm in the wrong lane when they tell me to turn, recalculating route, and they forgive you, and you just get on the right route. And I, I love, I cannot live without my iPhone. I get a new one every year, and uh, I think the internet has done nothing but enhance my life. I hear a lot of people criticize it. I love my internet. I love my iPhone. I got a, I got an iMac at home. And uh, I think the next 10 years, if they don't drop the bomb, are going to be really exciting for tech. What That's you another thing. Um, you mentioned the iPhone. It's kind of the wor one of the more worrying trends in society as people have become zombies with their phone it's like they're constantly looking at it and not noticing the world or whatever is going on around them um, and of course people trying to seek fame with their <coughs> I guess instant fame with their doing something with their phone like the selfie or the uh, or taking a video well, that's better than mass murder you know, that, that kind of fame. But that's the press's fault. They, they mention your name and they show your face. They shouldn't. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't know who John Wilkes Booth is. He shouldn't be famous. Or infamous. Well, he's infamous. <laughs> well, it's just a word that means famous. For the, all the wrong reasons. Yeah. Uh, I noticed they removed his... Uh, one of his statues, but I, I still saw that he was sneaking around the Force Theater in one of their scenes. Yes. Um, Six Semper Tyrannus, Ever Thus to Tyrants. The Virginia state motto. How did you get hooked up with um, Kurt Henning? Just a lucky break. I had nothing to do with it. All of a sudden, I was hooked up with Kurt Henning. And all of a sudden, I wasn't hooked up with Kurt Henning. Kurt Henning was a fantastic person. 
He had a very untimely death and a very ignominious one. <coughs> Cocaine overdose. Yeah. They're part of the, and we I asked this question earlier. Who do we miss most from the people that we grew up with that's no longer with us? And like. There's a lot of wrestlers who die, who pass well before, or a lot of wrestlers pass away before 50 years old because the toll on your body from doing wrestling yeah, it's is... the toll on your body from doing drugs, not from wrestling. They're doing drugs to, I guess, to cope with the pain, that perhaps? That is, wait a minute, stop, 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 stop. Okay. Come out. They're making excuses for their drug use by blaming something that is ridiculous. Okay, oh, I was in pain, so I did this, then I got a vote. You know what? Life's about choices. Mm -hmm. Drugs is a choice, too. Don't go blaming somebody else besides you. If you did it, you earned it. You wear it. You know, that's just my... We live in a society of, it's not my fault. It's not my fault. It's, it's wrestling. It's not my fault. It's society. It's not my fault. It's your fault. It's not my fault. I didn't get the 365 Crayolas for Christmas. You know what? Let's take account for our own problems. Let's uh, look in the mirror and say, self, I'm to blame. So it's not wrestling, it's drugs. And, it's, and nobody gave you the drugs, you took it. So everybody who uh, doesn't make it to 30, 40, and 50, or Amy, Wine, Amy, Amy Winehouse, yeah. 27, uh, the 27 Club, life's about choices. Now when you lose, don't lose the lesson. We lost Amy Winehouse. Can we not lose the lesson? I don't smoke, drink, or do drugs. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I live on a diet of greens, onions, mushrooms, beans, berries, and seeds. And I fast intermittently and prolonged often. Give my body a chance to rest and heal. Now if you find out that I die of a heart attack, I want you to say, well, at least he tried. This is distilled water, it's the only kind I drink. Mm. They talk about Flint, Michigan, and their yeah. water, I believe all the water is contaminated. Favorite memory, I guess, of um, your brother's wrestling exploits? Well, he had a match against Ricky the Dragon Steamboat that some people say was pretty good. And, um, he always wanted to top it, and he never could. And that was why he was hoping to have his final match with um, with Shawn Michaels. And um, they said he was too old, so he went to the WCW. Offended. He had he had several like close to five star affairs at WrestleMania. Besides Ricky Steamboat, the other. Two really standout matches was the one where his career it was like loser leaves town against the Ultimate Warrior, and then his match with uh, Ric Flair. Um, you believe uh, his match with Ricky Steamboat was outranked the other two? Athletically, yes. The, the beauty of the, of the art of wrestling was portrayed. You know, it's like two great athletes of similar build. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, Randy had a chip on his shoulder. He wanted to prove he was a great athlete. He wanted to prove that wrestlers were athletes. Mm -hmm. Some people think they are not. Randy wanted to prove they were. And he couldn't prove it with anybody else as well as with Ricky Steamboat. 
And in my opinion, that was the greatest match at the time. I'm not saying it hasn't been beaten out. Yeah. Because every year they should always try to beat it. But they wouldn't give Randy a chance to beat it because they said he was too old. And you know, Pat Patterson, when he dies soon, <laughs> um, I hope, um, they're going to give him a 10 bell salute. And everybody says, oh, what a wonderful man he invented the Royal Rumble and he did so much positive good. Yeah, he also stopped a great match from occurring, Macho Man against Shawn Michaels. Mm. So, um, while you're saying what a great man he was, why don't you include that? As a fan, don't you feel a little bit cheated that you didn't get to see them try to have a good match? You know, because that was ready. He was gonna, it was not gonna be a Montreal screw job. He was gonna lose and uh, retire to the announcer's table. They wouldn't let him because he was too old. So they, he never had a, he never, he never, he was never in the same ring with Shawn Michaels no, he as opponents or? Yeah, they, they wrestled in Europe once and, um, but he would have gone to new heights because that was just a cherry match. Randy was thinking about building it up and uh, Randy was very good at that. But, Life's about choices. Well, we're getting in this, the St. Louis area and heavier traffic, so I'm gonna close to wrapping this up. Um, any words of wisdom that um, you have for the uh, the Central Illinois wrestling fans and anybody who's uh, watching this program? Health comes first. Wealth, freedom. Three things. Health comes first, then wealth, then freedom. All right. The Genius Lane, Leaping Lenny Poffo. Read a book, The Miracle of Fasting by Paul Bragg. All right. The newest member of the Central Illinois Pro Wrestling Hall of Fame. I was glad to get you inducted in along with the, the rest of the family. Yes. And... I'm hoping there's, let's hope there's a third generation of wrestling Paphos to come. You did mention that. My grandson will not wrestle. Uh, uh, this, the madness must end. The madness must end. Nobody has an interest in becoming a professional wrestler in the Puffo family. Or he's, he's 14 months old. Oh, well, yeah, he has, it'll be at least 18 years before he, 17 or 18 years before he even thinks about it, but I hope he, he's able to um, enjoy um, you and your brother and his, um, I guess it's going to be great-grandfather, great or great-great-grandfather's um, matches from back in the day. I did not mention Angelo once, I don't think. I know Angelo's, several of his matches are um, online because um, the Chicago Film Archives uploaded um, a bunch of the old black and white um, reels. I don't know where they held the matches up there. Um, somewhere in the Chicago area. But After theater. Yeah. They had a whole treasure trove of matches from the 50s and they uploaded all those. Not the last couple of years. So He wrestled all the greats, including including our uh, St. Louis's own Harley Race. So, ah! I needed to turn here. Crap. Where? Well, no, maybe I'll get on the backside. Anyway, I'll wrap it up. That'll do it for this edition of PWCI this week. I'm the Mike of Crime Fire. We'll see you next time. <laughs>